Hi, this is Wynn Claybaugh. Welcome to my Best of Masters weekly audio blog for AmericanSalon.com. Next up is one of my favorite clips from the last 20 years of inspiring interviews from Masters Audio Club. Isn't it kind of interesting that like, we, we create what we think is supposed to be our life path? You know, I'm going to be an actress, I'm going to be a model, I'm going to do this. And when in reality, life's like, well, that's really cute, but no, that's not where you're going to go. And for you to be able to, to surrender to that, I mean, what was that process like for you? Because I think that there's some things that, like I play the piano and I pursue music, and once I tried to turn it into a career, it wasn't fun anymore for me. I didn't enjoy music anymore. And I think some things that we are good at or that we enjoy doing should be paths that we use to make money and others are just meant to be a hobby, so to speak. What do you... you know, when I love that you say that because it's interesting. I always say, you know, if I had to fill out a form in life and at the beginning of your life and you check off what you want, you know, and then how your life rolls out is so fascinating. Mm. You know, I had wanted to be an actress, you know, and where, as you get older and you look at why you want to do things, it's like, I guess I wanted recognition that I probably maybe didn't get from my parents. Right. But it never worked. The, the acting thing never clicked for me. And I have to say, the funniest thing about it was I was on my last acting job. Okay, not that I ever got many, but a girlfriend of mine who's a big casting director had lost her actress on this three-day job. And she asked me to come in and do it. And it was with an actor who was an unknown I mean, I was just in the scene with him. I wasn't doing the scene with him, but I was just one of the people in the scene with him, and his name was George Clooney. Okay, oh, yeah. He was unknown. You've heard of him? A little bit. Right, yeah, yeah. So I played a hooker, okay? And I'm like, this is the last thing in the world that I should be playing is a hooker. So I'm in the scene. I'm supposed to be massaging this guy. I, j I couldn't do it. I just <laughs> couldn't do it. And the director goes, stop. He goes, Brenda, could you get a little more into it? And I'm like... So I, I tried, and I'm like, this is the last time I'm ever doing this. This is the l I'm done with this, and I'm going to get a job in wardrobe, working in wardrobe, because I love to work with clothes. So I turned myself over to it, and at the beginning, I have to say, it was difficult, because it, there's a hierarchy in this business, as you know, when mm -hmm. there is a hierarchy. And, and I have to say that, that I guess wardrobe isn't necessarily at the top of it, but I thought, you know something, I'm going to make wardrobe be at the top of it. Well, you got an Emmy, sweetheart. And I've got an Emmy, and there she is. She sits over there. But it's fun. It's creative for me. And you said an incredibly important word when it's surrendering. You know, what we think we want and what rolls out for us are two different things. And I have to say, this career has been so fulfilling for me. I'm absolutely passionate about it. And the irony of the whole thing is that after I left the nanny because I started a family, which is something else I wasn't going to do, I was never going to have children. And one of the greatest fulfillments of my life are my, my two boys. And the irony of my career is that I landed up going on camera. Because a year after I left the nanny, I had Clayton, I get a call from E, hey. could I come in? They wanted to interview me, and I went in, did an interview, and then I became a co-host on a show called Fashion Emergency. Yeah, yeah you're on a show. Which, yes, which yeah. was, became a huge hit and was one of the beginning shows of all the makeover shows from which was spawned all of this fashion television that you see. So I landed up going on camera doing my passion, which is helping people you know, be the best they can be. So, you know, I already think I know the answer to this question, but I want to have a discussion about it. Let's. So was there a regret or resentment that your life didn't become the way you thought it was supposed to, i.e. becoming an actress? Can I tell you something? When I love you because I just love your questions. Okay. <laughs> I just love your questions. No, there's absolutely no regret about it at all because we have an imagining of what we think we should be doing. Okay, but then if you open up to the universe, as you say, and allow to come in what's supposed to come in and look at your natural talents, you know, um, then you will lead a fulfilled life. Because, I mean, I consider this a journey. This is a journey that we're here for a, a X amount of years. And it's make that journey a fulfilling journey. And work is a huge part of that journey. It takes up a big part of our day. So 
for me, it's find out what your natural talents are. I mean, forget about the shoulds, what you should be doing. It's like find out what your natural talents are and your passions are and turn that into a career. Because one of my favorite sayings, and I don't know who said it, I saw it in a book once, it's find something you are passionate about and you will never have to work a day in your life. Right.